Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel, Jersey Shore Pondscapes videos. My name is Chris. I've been building koi ponds professionally for over 25 years now, and I'm trying to ex share some of my experiences with you um, by doing all these videos on my channel. And I also have a website called Pondscapes and More. Um, if you're interested, I would suggest you take a look at that and you can see a lot of pictures of my work and hopefully it'll inspire you a bit for your own pond. All right, so today we are talking about air pumps and aeration systems in your pond. Um, this is really important. Okay, uh, we need to keep our ponds aerated. The bigger your fish get, the more of an oxygen demand they're going to have. Okay, so keeping your waterfalls running during the summer is, is a great thing. And if you have a nice strong waterfall, you may not need to have an air pump in your pond all the time. Um, some of my clients in the summer will put the air pumps, the air stones into a filter system rather than um, a pond, like into a filter tank, and it'll keep the pond aerated a little extra that way. Um, but you can certainly leave it in the pond in the summer if you like. Um, but it's really important in the winter. For me, I shut all my ponds down in the winter. I blow out all my pipes, drain, clean all my filter tanks, disconnect the pumps, the UV lights. Um, so I really need to keep an air pump running in the winter. Now we're going to just show you um, the air pump that I have here and how it's set up. Um, there's a lot of different air systems. They're all basically the same idea, right? A pump um, with maybe a little manifold to little uh, tubing, however, you know, out to uh, an air stone of some sort, okay? So this particular pump, um, this is a really nice pump. This is a company called Alita and it is... Um, it's an expensive pump, but it's worth every penny of it, okay? They're really good pumps. Um, I've used these pumps for many years. Um, there's another company of pumps that I've used um, forever that, I mean, you know, eight, 10 years old, they're still running. They're really nice. So I just wanna show you basically how an air system like this would work. Um, you know, obviously we have the air pump itself. Um, we would connect that, there's a rubber connector on the front that we can put in a piece of tubing or we can use a, in a little um, <laughs> barb adapter like this one um, that we can put inside here and connect a piece of tubing. I usually connect them to a manifold, something like this. Um, this one here has two um, quarter inch valves okay um, that we can uh, connect um, air tubing to okay um, these are really nice um, they're easy to adjust this one has um, two air stones we can run off of it depending on the size pump you know we can get three four five six whatever you, you require from there, this one here uses a quarter inch tubing, something like this, okay, that we connect onto here. And then the other end of it goes on to an air stone, okay. Now I have two air stones here. This one is a, has a quarter inch uh, hose barb on it. This one has a three eighths inch hose barb on it. Now, the reason why I carry two is because sometimes I set up a system like this with uh, the quarter inch tubing. And sometimes I set up a system like this. This is a 3 8 inch tubing, but it's a weighted air line. All right, this will sink down to the bottom of your pond. So I can connect my air stone directly right to it. Okay. Um, so, you know, depending on how you set up your ponds, um, you know, if you have rocks and gravel and stuff in it, you can obviously just bury these tubes right down into the rocks and gravel and just have your air stone on, on top um, to aerate. There are some bottom drains that have a, a lid that has an air diffuser on the top and you can connect to that. Um, I don't like doing that only because in the winter, I do not want my air coming from the bottom of the pond. 
Now I have a whole another video on seasonal care. Um, actually there's four, one for spring, one for summer, one for fall, and one for winter. And the one for the uh, winter um, talks about why I don't like to keep my air stones down on the bottom in the winter. And it's basically because the water's warmer on the bottom of the pond than on the surface. That's why your fish lay on the bottom and the ice freezes on the top. So I don't want to take that warm water off the bottom of the pond and circulate it up to the top because we're actually going to be cooling the water more than it normally would be. So in the winter time, I like the flexibility of systems like this where I can move the air stones and bring them up on a shelf or bring them up on a higher level. This way we're still oxygenating the water but we're not totally circulating that entire body of water as, as quickly as it would be if we had the air stones down on the bottom. Okay, That's a whole other uh, subject. But um, basically I just want to give you a rundown you know, with air pumps. Um, summertime in the hot summer heat your oxygen levels in the pond drop, okay? Warm water holds less saturated oxygen than cold water does. So it's really important in the summertime that we're providing plenty of oxygen, okay? So those waterfalls are really important that they keep working. Um, you know, in addition, an air pump is also great to put in. Now, Another little um, bit of advice that I give a lot of my clients is that if they're going away on vacation for a, you know an extended period of time, a week, two weeks, 10 days, whatever, um, I strongly suggest that they take their air system and they put their air stones in the pond while they're away. Now, it's a safety um, factor here that's just in case if something should happen to the pump in your pond, that the pump stops and your filters stop, your waterfall stops and that aeration stops, your air pump hopefully will continue to run and keep the pond aerated. So when you get back from vacation, you don't find the pond full of dead fish. Now, the little trick with that is, is not to plug this air system in, this air pump into the same outlet as your you know, main pump and all that. Because your main pump, something happens, it might trip that breaker and then shuts off all the power. So I really recommend to run an extension cord from your house, uh, out, you know, another outlet outside that's on a separate circuit to this pump. So if something happens with your pond pump and system, this one will still be running because it comes from someplace else. Okay, so that's just a little bit of advice that I, I um, you know, recommend to people. It's easy, you know, it's an easy thing to do and you're just gonna set it up, throw the air stones in the pond, turn it on, plug it in, you're done, okay? Um, so that's basically a little wrap on aeration, okay? Uh, it's really important to keep that pond aerated. I can't stress that enough. It's much healthier environment when it's an oxygen rich environment, okay? It's not gonna be a stale, stagnant body of water. There's gonna be air, um, oxygen flowing, which helps uh, beneficial bacteria and all kinds of microbes to grow. And it really, really is important for the overall health of your pond, okay? Um, get a strong pump. You want a nice boil on the surface, not just little bubbles like in a little tiny fish tank that come up. You want to turn that water around and aerate it thoroughly. A nice boil on the surface, okay? I can't recommend um, that more. So um, that about wraps it up. Again, thank you very much for watching. I hope it helped you out a little bit. Um, please uh, hit the like button on my channel and subscribe if you'd like to see some more videos and learn a lot more about your pond. All right. Thank you very much. Take care. We'll see you again soon.